Oh, we're gonna put the we're gonna put the bag on the set on the set? No, no. No, no, no. No bag, bag no bag right. on the set? No, no, no. You gotta worry about that. Yo, um. There's like Hey y'all y'all to make sure y'all cut your phones on vibrate, please. Or on quiet. I got you. Like what? Come, I got my cash. I'm gonna mention that though. I got I'm my cash. Like, I'm gonna be like, man, Floyd will come in, so Channing pull a good watch out. No, 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 no. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like, hey. I need a water too. Good, man. Oh, shit, I'm here. <laughs> we appreciate you. Yeah, man, we appreciate man. this for sure, dog. So tell me about the Happy Dad. Yeah, man. So Happy Dad is one of our sponsors, dog. It's okay. a seltzer, you know what I mean? Uh, it gets you a little tipsy. It won't get you all the way right. Oh, we know though, you know your body's a temple. Oh yes. You know what I'm saying? You yes. don't, you don't, you don't put don't any do, of those things do, in. Nothing. We allow Channing no, to do I don't all do that. Nothing. You, nothing. Have, you have never drunk. I don't do nothing. And that was a that was a athletic decision, or you just? It's just that you know I just seen uh, just so many different stuff that break everybody down, break so many blacks down. Yeah. Entertain, entertainers, athletes. So. You should probably get that on camera. Can you stop talking at some point? Channing can't stop talking. You know he can't I just stop want to talk. I like to talk. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, we're back on the pivot, and this is a, a momentous day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got the man in the building. It used to be Pretty Boy Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Night Money Mayweather, uh, business mogul, uh, one of the greatest boxers. Many think the greatest boxers of all time, right? 50 and 0. Mm -hmm. um, and even more than that, somebody that's just doing big things away from the ring. And you started that in your sport. But we just played football, dog. You know yeah, saying? Ain't yeah. nobody worry about us. Y'all with helmets. I want to say this. Y'all didn't just play football. I take my hat off to you guys. I'm proud of you guys. Because you're you're able to capitalize off the field. And that's really what it's about. So um, you guys do a great job. I've been watching. And I'm proud of you guys. Three brothers that came from a, a brutal sport to now interviewing some of the biggest people, entertainers, artists, athletes. You guys do do well, what? What did I say about you? I know our shit brutal, but I ain't got no helmets. I know ain't nobody ever really hit you, so that's all. <laughs> but yeah, boxing is brutal. I know nowadays with the celebrity boxing, and we'll probably get into that. They yes. question that, but your makeup, your foundation, that's brutal. Well, my dad, you know, I talked about this on numerous occasions about my career, about my dad. The first thing my dad taught me, the first day I went in the gym, the less you get hit, the longer you last. So I took that all throughout life and it panned out. But people always taking shots though. Oh yes, of course, of course. That comes with the territory, I understand that. You know, I get the hate on both sides. All right. The black side and the white side. So only thing I could do is just make sure that I'm good my family is good and just be the best father as well as the best person I can be for the people that that are around me and that put trust in me. Right. Why, do, why do you think you got hate from both sides? Because that, that's, that's, that's real. You just said it. Yeah, yes. to me. Why do you think there's hate from both sides? They got to point the finger at somebody. I mean, I think that it's just that when I say, when I talk about the numbers that I'm doing, I'm really doing. It's not like, you know how the young kids say now, uh, capping, or we, we used to say fronting, so ain't no future in your fronting, but whatever I talk about is what I've done. But the great thing just really just about me is that um, I was able to capitalize off the hate. Mm -hmm. And it was motivation for me to go out there and work hard, because I didn't want to be that person, that athlete on a certain show or a documentary where they say, Oh, look what happened to Mayweather. He made so much money and he didn't have nothing. Um, I just believe in building generational wealth, believe in giving back to those who, who gave to me, meaning that I wanted to make sure my grandmother had a home because she gave back to me. And a lot of times it's okay to give back to charities. You know, a lot of people give back to charities, but you can't give back everything and then you won't have nothing. Then uh, you'll be the person that's looking for a handout. So, you know, you kind of talked about that 
building that wealth and and doing different things that way. But you know, you started off as Pretty Boy Floyd. Yes. And then you moved to Money Mayweather, and Money Mayweather became the villain. But part of being that villain was building a brand where people tuned in whether it was the two sides that hated you or the side like me that was cheering for you to win because I, I looked at the discipline of the way you approached the sport. Was that a calculated decision for you to become Money Mayweather and kind of be the villain that people tuned in to see lose? Just look at the history. New edition, you had Bobby Brown. He was the biggest. So a lot of times you take whatever hand you're, whatever hand you're dealt in life, you take that hand and you play it, just like in space. You just take the hand that you you dealt, play it, and be the best that you can be. I really, wasn't, I really wasn't tripping on it. I was with a Jewish promoter. I knew that he couldn't promote me the way I wanted to be promoted. He wanted me to be um, a, a little different from a lot of other athletes. I wanted to be outspoken. And I didn't want to be like Muhammad Ali, but I, but I take my head off to him to guys like Muhammad Ali who paved the way for me. I wanted to be Floyd Mayweather. That's what I really wanted to be. So that, I, I, I wanted to be flashy. So that, that moment, the big pivot moment, where you know you had boxing in the bag, and um, you know there was a whole nother side to it. What was that pivot moment that said, I can do this shit? Like, mm -hmm. I am the show. What was that moment? I didn't understand, because when I signed my deal, I was only a teenager. When a teenager getting that type of money, you're a kid, you don't, you don't right. know no better. So with age, I grew, got wisdom, got more savvy, and understood the business part. And once I said, I'm no longer going to be just an athlete. I'm going to be a businessman. See, a lot of the fighters right now in boxing, they're just fighters. Right. I'm a businessman. So right now, I'm retired. But you got guys like Warren Buffett that's in his 80s or 90s that can still make a ton of money the Waltons that own Walmart, Bill Gates can still make computers. But soon as someone black, when my career is over as far as me in a combat sport, as far as boxing, whatever, if I'm promoting on social media or I'm doing exhibitions, it's like, oh man, he's broke. No, it's not a crime for them to make money. They don't say nothing about the guys that's right. 80 and 90 that's still making hundreds of millions and billions. But soon as somebody black does it, your, your people, your own people say, oh, he's broke. Listen, I'm not here to talk about no one else's pockets right. because I got to where I got to focusing on Floyd Mayweather. That's how I got to be, be becoming 50 and 0. Because my thing was always, I didn't care what nobody else was doing. I had to focus on me and my family, focus on what I have to do. And that's how, that's always been my outlook. And does the, the, the money team, I got a couple of shirts. They might have been knockoff, my bad, though. <laughs> got it from the fleet. Well, well, you know, they say if oh. once they start bootlegging something, you made it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so, and yeah, you would so. buy a bootleg, huh? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think it was like $8 or something. I appreciate it. At all, it peeled up in about two washes. But, so I get a real one. But well, you, you the, didn't get it from me. The okay. <laughs> but the money team, you talk about money, you talk about, you know, the misconception of, of your yes. finances and all. Does the money team have a money manager? Do you decide on these deals? How are you gonna be making money when you ate it? Well, I'm, I'm set for life. No, but like, but like still, the financial shit. approach to it, is it you? Well, well, is I, it a... I believe in building generational wealth. Even like when my children, love my children. All four of my children are adults. And I told them, listen, no more handouts. No more handouts. It can't be because I feel like I'm hurting my children just by I give them money, uh, they go shopping, they put gas in their car, they party, they come back, I need money. I give them money, I buy them houses, I buy them cars. I told them, listen, from here on out, if you guys go to school or you work in one of my businesses, then you can branch off, get your own business, and I'll put the money up to help you start a business, but I need you guys to take what I've already started and triple and double that and then I need my grandchildren to come behind you guys and do the same thing. Is it hard now, Floyd, you know, being in a, a situation where you have to be both parents for three yeah, well, of your kids? Well, I'm, well, I don't want to say both parents because mm -hmm. I have children. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had children by two 
two different females. And right. as of this year, it's been 26 years. I knew both of them. Mm-hmm. I met them both when they were, when they both were 16. Mm-hmm. And actually, uh, she's here with me. Um, she's one of my closest friends. Mm-hmm. You know, the one that I had one child with. We got a, a grandson. She's a great woman. We talk almost every day. And I can't, myself, I can't drive, have Rolls Royces, mansions all around the world if she don't have nothing mm-hmm. because she's a part of me. So if she's a part of me, I got to make sure she's driving a Rolls Royce. I got to make sure she got a G-Wagon. I got to make sure she got a beautiful pool and a nice house. And she live in a gated community because a woman is a reflection of the man that she deal with to each his own. I'm just talking about the people that's in my life. The other mother of my three children, she passed away. Um, and you know, that's that's really that's really a touchy, a very, very touchy subject. But at the end of the day, I'm a realist. Mm-hmm. You know, they always talk about the negative things between me and her. We have so many positive, so many positive days. And I'm a public figure. I'm a, I'm a fighter um, from birth. I'm, I was a fighter from birth. So as soon as someone get touched, even if I'm around, if, if I'm here with you guys and someone get touched, I'm here. So the first person they're going to say is Floyd Mayweather. No different from if someone that's in, in my entourage touch, you know, move someone out the way, the lawsuit is coming to me. Chase that check. I mean, and and it comes with the territory, and I understand. But I'm going I'm to go back to, because, um, you know, I apologize. I jump, because when you guys shoot shit at me. I'm, I'm <laughs> sound gonna, like I, me, bro. And when you guys shoot oh, shit at yeah. me, I jump all around the board. I think about, I have so many thoughts that move so fast. Um, beautiful woman, great person. And, um, but what what God got in store, we can't, we can't go against it. Because, you know, when God call your number, that's what it is. My number can get, can get called tomorrow. I had, a, I had a great life. I can't cry. I can't complain. But every day, the worries that I have, and I haven't talked about this to nobody. I say this for you guys, for my, for my people, my children. I worry about my children every day because I got mine from the ground up. Hard work and dedication. Prayers and belief in a, in, a, in a good team. So I try to share that knowledge with my children every day about building generational wealth. Um, you know, just about, uh, just so many, it's so many different avenues that I can touch on. And the reason why, you know, I take my time and don't shoot everything out there to you guys about different businesses that I'm involved with because everything ain't for everybody. Because it's like this. If you guys, if everybody claiming that I'm not that sharp and I'm not that smart, then why should I give you guys my business plan? Right, why you want to know? Why should I reveal my business plan? It's obvious if I've been a multi-millionaire and, and, and made over a billion, uh, made over a billion dollars by the time I was 40, I'm gonna think I made over, I think, 1.2 billion with no endorsement deals, independent. So it's obvious I got some type of remedy or I know what I'm doing. So, but I don't want to reveal it to the world. I want everybody to think what they want to think. How do you navigate that? Where like you're so successful, you got you got bread, you got business plans, you, you yes. know what's going on. How do you decipher who to bless with? Financially, knowledge, who to help, who not to help. There's I know it's people throwing themselves at you all the time. How well, do you decipher where that fake love is and where that real love is? I will always I will always be there for James McNear. Um, I will always be there for Ricky Brazil. I will, I will always be there for Melissa Brim, and I will always be there for my children. I don't always have to be there for you financially. I just truly believe in putting you in a position so you can provide for yourself, and you can teach the ones, the people that's under you how to survive. I, I mean, because it's easy for me to give, give, give. That's the easy part. But then when you give, 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 and then you stop that one time you don't want to give somebody something. Y'all know how it is. Mm-hmm. I'm the worst person in the world. My team I run around with or that's around me, I like a, I like a more of a genuine team. I don't, you know, I'm not really into hanging out with other other celebrities. You know, I, I've learned my lesson from that. But you're the boss and, and, and your team respect that. 
I think if you can share anything with everybody that's tuned in, everybody see you and they say, all right, he has all of the money and he has to be extremely happy. But we know money don't always bring happiness. Oh, right? absolutely not. What's the, the the biggest mistake that you've made in your life that you can share, you know, with people? Same mistake that all four of us made. Trust. Mm. It's a fact. Trust. Every morning I get up in the mirror and I say, you know, I say to myself, when I'm, you know, I'm brushing my teeth, I say, you know what? Only person I can trust is that person right there. Cause we all know we can trust ourselves. Right. But we all always know somebody else is always gonna let us down. Whether it's a male or a female, somebody in our life is always gonna let us down. Even like in relationships. You know, uh, what's the number one problem in relationships nowadays? Trust. You know, uh, why are you liking all his pictures? And uh, who liking your pictures? And see, my thing is this, as far as with social media. I got a team that run my social media. And when I want to post something, I send, I send them the photo. And I go to my memo pad, I type it up. I send it over and I say, post it. Because, you know, we come from old school way before social media. When, yeah. when we go to the club, when you get a girl number, she write a number on a piece of paper. We dance, wasn't no VIP. Man, you cherish that piece of paper though, boy. Absolutely. You know, if y'all was walking home, or if y'all if y'all hitched a ride, y'all be like, how many numbers you get? You know, yeah. Right. Yeah. Old, old school. Yeah. You just go to the mall in the middle of the day. <laughs> Catch them workers. Yeah. You know they got to grind to them. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. At the club, you don't know they grind. If you working at the, at the Annie's, Annie's Pretzels, you know they got grind. Yes. The Annie's Pretzels? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Two of them from Annie's Pretzels. A lot of that with us, man, trust, that's that's big. That's an unwritten rule. That should be understood all the time. Yeah, so that's, and that's, that's what... the reason we had to pivot with our old situation. And uh, we, we, we took the high road for a minute. But it really came down to that because some shit just is unwritten in its business and it has to happen that way. But not everybody respect the game that way. And I, I saw something, uh, Logan Paul, he said you owe him some bread. How you feel about someone uh, making those type of accusations? That comes with the territory. Right. And you, you got to realize, when you used to getting, um, you know, to them, that's real money. Mm -hmm. and, and I like YouTube because I don't mind getting that. A right. YouTube check. Shit, okay, we getting a YouTube check. <laughs> right, this is gonna yeah. be a big YouTube. Check. Yeah, so you know the money is not coming fast enough. That's mm -hmm. why when they say money on the back end, far as pay per view, it take a while. Right, you know, and he shouldn't trip if he feel like he done great numbers and we done record breaking numbers. Then I understand nothing comes right away. Just like I'm still collecting checks from fights uh, seven, eight years ago. I'm still collecting checks. Why? Because I made smart moves, and I'm my own boss. So they hate when the tables turn, right. you know? Look how many years they've been owe, owing us money. But well, we never, and we don't never trip. So now when the tables turn, they say, oh, you owe us something. Be happy with the biggest payday you ever got in your life. Speaking of, of big paydays, you know, you've talked about being your own boss, right? Yes. And, and having, and having a, a promoter that, that, that didn't understand the way you want it to be. I feel like you ushered in a different way of fighters thinking about themselves and their business. Uh, yeah. I'm a huge combat sports fan. But we, we don't we don't want to just say fighters. Okay. We have to say just athletes, period. I changed the whole dynamics of how athletes get paid. But you know, and it's just so many athletes that I, I take my hat off to that work so hard that I love. And I'm talking about, I mean, it's I mean, football, basketball, boxing, baseball. I mean, it's just so many sports. You gotta realize, cause I've been fighting since Michael Jordan was playing basketball. I was getting it in. I was undefeated from there to now, and my and then LeBron James' career is almost over, and I'm still getting it. A one man army. So a lot of times when you when I be seeing these ath these different athletes, like, oh, this athlete got athlete of the decade. I'm like, well, shit. Do I get athlete of the century? Right. Shit. I mean, I'm saying I'm not jealous because remember, I, I, I'm a, they're going to always get my support. All these athletes are going to always get my support because that's what I do. I support my people. And just like Mexicans support Mexicans, Dominicans support Dominicans, Puerto Ricans support Puerto Ricans, Chinese support, support Chinese. 
I'm a black American. I'm always gonna support my people first. And I'm always gonna be known as a black American. I can't call myself an African American because when they wanna separate us, then, then they say, He's, he, we are African American. But remember this, when I'm, keep, when I'm competing in the Olympics, I didn't compete on an African American Olympic team. I competed on an American Olympic team. So don't separate me when you want to separate me. I think, in, and so in, in looking at that and where you are now, Floyd, when you get into all of these different business ventures, yes. do you still have that athletic mindset? Because the one thing I always said about you, and I said it on TV all the time that I admired, is it always felt like you had a million different things going on, but you were pure to your sport. The discipline you showed in training, the discipline you showed when you were in the ring on fight night, to me, is the reason you're undefeated. But you had all of these other things going on. How did you stay laser focused on the main thing all the time? I wanted my dad to be proud of me first, before anybody. I wanted my dad to be proud of me first. I never wanted to let my father down. When my dad, when my dad always said my son was the best as a kid, my son would, my son would break all records. That stuck with me. But the main thing that I really wanted to do, I wanted my people to be proud of me. I don't care about nobody else. There's nothing like your own people. When you come from blood, sweat, and tears from the ground up, your people being proud of you, that's a great feeling. But then you get so much jealousy and hate from your people. And I'm more like, yo, listen, this is, the, this, this is more than the American dream. Why is this more than the American dream? It's because of this. I, I'm my own boss. I do what I want to do. I say what I want to say. Whereas some athletes come on y'all's show, they can't say what they really want to say. I can say whatever the fuck I want to say. I'm my own boss. And if I feel like something is not right, I'm going to speak on it. No different for, if, if a situation, if it's something that I don't like, and Alicia would tell you guys this, if it's something I don't like, I'm like, no, no I'm not doing that. Even when they, when they used to feel all access. Or they'd be like, oh, no, let's do a fake script. I'm, I'm not doing no fake script because I'm not fake. I'm going to give you the real or I'm not doing it. This is how I am. Now you never got to worry about that on here. <laughs> the, 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 never. <laughs> the perception, you know, people think uh, the motivation is the money, but they, the motivation, don't hear, the motivation. they don't hear you talking about your people. Yeah, the, the, you know motiv the motivation That's was when my career was over, there's nothing like when you walk anywhere around the world. And, and you know where I get the most love from? Africa. I get the most love from Africa. My biggest fans is from Africa. But then when, I, when I'm, you see your people, you get so much hate from your people. If you've been working and training all day, people want to take a picture with you. But at least come to me and say, hello, how you doing? Right. I don't deserve a hello. I don't deserve a how you doing today. You know, I don't, none of that. So almost entitlement. Just run up, run up on I, you. I, yeah. Hold up. Hold up, I'm a human being. But you're being. such a big star, right? I, I understand, because we've all been there. I'm, I'm not a star. You're a star. I'm not a star. <laughs> Explain. I'm a legendary I am. Ooh. Ooh. That worked. That worked. That, that, <laughs> that, that, that worked. I ain't gonna argue. You know, and, you know, and people and the reason why I say that, because in the history books, my name will live forever. I agree. Or, or, and I don't knock no fighter. I love all fighters. Don't knock no fighter. But the thing, the difference between me and any other fighter, my records are here to stay. I want to, do I want to see them break my records? Absolutely. But they won't be broke. Mm. And, but, and guess what? It's easier now to break the records. Why is it easier now to break the records? Because you got, you got all 10 guys that's in boxing in the top 10, that's rated in the top 10, all, all of them are champions. Mm -hmm. 17, 17 dang belts. And they don't have to go through 17, I want it's 20 belts now. <laughs> 20, <I did. laughs> So I was saying, you know, people are enamored by your stature, your figure, you know, the, the legendary icon. You know, do they get a pass? Because sometimes they get lost in it. You know, they, they might not be disrespectful, right. right? Or or wanting to be disrespectful, right. but you are, yes, shit, right. I'm over here like, all right, yeah. I want to keep it real. I'm a, the, I know what the people want to hear and what I want to say, but fuck, like, I got to get my thoughts together. Cause I gotta line you up so you can get back to the people. So sometimes you kind of get lost in translation and say, "Hey, let me get a photo." You know, we so, all have so it's okay. So it I'm, ain't okay to run up. I, 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 I want to come what? on record and say, so to anybody that came to me for an autograph or a picture, and 
you guys felt, whether it was a male or a female, if you felt I came off a little harsh or I was a little, I was a little pushy, I apologize. I love my fans because without my fans and my fans pushing me and supporting me and buying pay-per-view, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I apologize to any and everybody that I didn't sign an autograph for or I didn't take a picture. I think that's dope. You know, and I think they also got to understand that you are human. Yes. You know, people, like I say, that's the point I was trying to make. People tend to forget that. And uh, it's, it's, it's a split second. It's a split second. But even, bro, even moving with you, you know, we've been out here, we've been hanging out and stuff, and yes. we've been at some parties together. And is it weird to you? Because watching you and watching your entourage around you and having that support system, you got some big ass security guards. Bro, I got some football players. Bro, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> big ass security guards. You got guard. one of them that would have been the only black dude on Troy. <laughs> he walked past us the other night. I was like, Chan, be no, cool though. When be he cool. walked up, I, I, I flinched up. I thought he was going you know, I, I was scared he might grab me. You know what's crazy? I, I always look at it like this. A lot of times when we get, when we get, um, when we make our money, the first thing we think about is, buying jewelry and buying cars instead of making sure we're protected. Mm -hmm. You know, I got my my security to make sure to alleviate any problems from happening, not to start any problems. And um, before I pay for anything, I'm gonna make sure that I'm protected. You never had that feeling though, like I'm Floyd Mayweather, like I can't, I can't be touched and if anybody run up on me, I'm protected as well. Well, I don't just have security. I got guys with me that's uh, cops. Mm -hmm. You know, I I never claim to be the biggest gangster in the world. No, not at all. You know, um, I was a, I was a kid that came up, had a rough background, and worked my way to a point where. You know, as you get older, like I said before, you change, and um, I don't want no problems with nobody. I don't have beef with nobody. Cause you're a granddaddy now. How how was that like? Oh, my, right? my grandson. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want to hear. Let's talk about that, man. Cause you know, people. They see all of this stuff. A little, man, little money. But they yeah. don't see like the, the human in you a lot. Yeah, of time. Well, you know, the people on the outside. Yeah, I'm proud of I'm proud of my daughter because even though she's a little young to have a baby, 21, and she'll be 22 this year, but I'm proud of her. I'm proud of NBA young boy. Um, very, very talented uh young kid. Right. Um, one of the biggest artists as far as in music. Right. He got a coat, he got a coat like following. Um I look at him, you know, just like my, just like one of my sons. I look at him just like one of my sons. I only want the best for him. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't want him having beef with anyone, right. you know, but, but um, these kids beefing nowadays and don't know what they beefing for. Right. There's so, I mean, so much talent. You see, see what happened to these young kids, they dying on the regular, pop smoke. I mean, just so many young rappers are dying. Young entertainers just period. And I feel like um, uh, NBA young boy, it was when he went away for a while. I like to say he go to college for a little bit, right. went to school for a little bit. He's back, and I'm proud of him, proud of my daughter, and I only want the best for NBA young boy. I'm gonna continue to push him and push her, both of them to be great. My grandson, I love him. You know, every day. You know, uh, actually, my my grandson is just like his mom. His mom used to. Hold on my leg all day, and he want me to pick him up all day. Right, you yeah. change so, the diaper. Yet? You know, I don't, I don't, uh, no, I ain't changed the diaper. No, no, no. <laughs> I, but do I know how to change the diaper? Absolutely. Right. So, um, you know, after the show, because we don't, everything ain't for everybody. So, right. yeah. we haven't showed my grandson to the world yet. So, but when we finish, you know, with us, I'll show you guys my grandson. You like a long time. It seems like people are always around you. Do you like? Do you like to sit in the living room with your grandson, watch TV? You know, when I sit with him and we watching TV, I go to sleep and he go to sleep and they take pictures of us. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you don't, you don't, you don't have a long time. It, well, you, you got a, you got kids, I, so you I, have I got some a lot. Long so time. let me let me kind of explain. I got a lot. So because my house is big, and the one in Vegas, my house here is is, is all my house is is like you know I got none of us expect you to have a small house yeah, anywhere. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I, I got some nice spread. <laughs> <laughs> you, so got, got, you don't got a three one. <laughs> you got a three one. Who's a three one? Three bedroom, one bathroom. Oh, I got seventeen. I got twelve bedroom, seventeen bathroom. You got more bathroom? How many times you go to the bathroom? Seven, I got seventeen bathrooms. <laughs> I got to every corner. <laughs> and one of my house, I got. Uh, 
12 bedrooms, 17 bathrooms, three kitchens, and five laundry rooms. And I parked 40, I got three garages. I parked 40 cars in the inside. How many cars you have? Total? Total. Probably 100. So when we were talking, you, so there's a place for black cars, a, pay, a place for white, white cars. cars. And, and then we got the trucks. We just, in, in LA, LA a little wild. Okay. So when you're in LA, the roads are really not good in LA. So in LA, we, re, we normally just drive trucks. You know, we kind of stay low key, but we got a nice spread out here too. 52 million. I was gonna say, do you, do you walk into CarMax? Or you, <laughs> is it something special to get a no, car? No, no, when you want cars, when you get to that, when you get to that elite level, when you want cars, you already know what I want. Cause I didn't already, already, I've already drove everything. And you, so you, know, you wake I, it, up and it's in the in the driveway. You gotta get it from somewhere. The, the cars? Yeah. No, my guy make my guy called me like I got different cars. What you want? I'm like, bring me four. Bring me, bring me that. Bring me that. Bring me that. Bring me that. Yeah, bring them to me. And if I don't want them, I'm like, yo, send some back. So you said, wait, bring me four of them though. Like yeah, that's whatever I want. <laughs> You can't drive but one at a time, well, Floyd. Remember, remember this, I made smart investments. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I still, do, I mean, I'm gonna speak my mind, but I do business with everybody now. I do every, business with everybody from all walks of life. Of course, I love my people first, but I do business with people from all walks of life. So you, you know, we talked about boxing and we talked about the business decisions. Uh, now, no, we talked about business decisions, but I ain't tell y'all everything that I'm involved with. You are, but you guys already know I own a tall, you know, I don't own it by myself. But I'm involved with real estate, commercial real estate, okay. skyscrapers. We got one Vanderbilt um, that that just got done. So, you know, I, I got a, I got a huge team. I got guys in New York, mainly in New York. I got guy in Miami. I got guys in Japan. So I'm doing business all around the world. How do you decide? Because actually, we I appreciate Girl Collection. I okay. Yeah, I appreciate you it. You were telling about the lie you told? <laughs> we was out there. And I told him I was your cousin <laughs> and got some free dances. You could have. You could have. You could have. You could have. You know what I'm saying? my dude, yeah, we got our uncles, uncles, uncles. <laughs> but, uh, like, how do you decide? Like, girl collection. I like fishing. I bought a fishing boat. You want to go to the shake spot, you buy a strip club. Like, how do you decide on the one vendor? But, like, how do you decide on your business venture? You sit, you listen, you learn. There's only three ways you can learn hearing, seeing, and doing. So, how I learn is, that's what, made me, that's, that's what makes me so deadly in boxing. I can learn all three ways. I can watch, I can learn, I can hear it and I can learn. And if you show me it, if you show me a hands-on, I can learn. So I'm deadly in all three ways. You talked about having people in Japan and all these different places. Uh, I was super excited on my way out here. ESPN flew me out here and I had A1 on Southwest, right? So that meant- What's A1? A, so A1 mean you get the board first because you got to pick your own spot. And if you get A1, you can get the joint that don't have a seat in front of it in the exit row, and you can stretch your feet out, yeah, and you can take yeah. your shoes off. You know what I'm talking like about? Like a nice seat on the nice plane. Nice seat on the plane. Yeah. When the last time you flew commercial? I'm fired up on A1. Hey, he laughed. You, laugh, you, you take a flow on his A1. I don't, I don't, I don't know. He but probably don't even know that uh, know. the boarding pass is on the phone. You're right, yeah. You For real? There ain't even paper no more. Yeah, man, we can just hold the joint. Yeah. You can hold it under the joint. You just put your phone under the joint. Like I'm not, okay, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm being funny. You got y'all got to be bullshit. <laughs> I can say that, right? Yeah. Well, let me say what you want. So what, what's your what's your travel arrangements then? Since A one is funny. You want me to show you right now? Yeah. I get my phone. I can no, show you right the, now. Oh, the, the, the top. Oh, you want to go? You want to fly to? I know you love Dubai. I, I'm gonna show you. Let me, um, can you call call AJ. My sister. She gonna call. I'm call my pilot right now. Yeah. So you just call your pilot and he just come where. It's like an Uber. I'm finna show you. you oh, he said so, pilot. I thought you said partner. I'm sorry. Pilot. I'm sorry. You know I talk fast. <laughs> people. This so people got pilots? Not people. Yeah. They Floyd. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. He got to have a cousin that got a pilot, too. <laughs> I, got, I got pilots on. I keep my pilots on. Hey. Hey, Nathan. Hey, Joe. Hey, what's up? So, yes, so yesterday you guys flew over to Vegas to pick my daughter and mother up. And my daughter and my grandson up, right? That's correct. Yep. Okay. You know I got you know I got, I got tickets for you guys to go to the Super Bowl tomorrow, but I got also okay. I got Dan. He's gonna go. So I need to I need you to fly over there because you got to pick some, some, a couple people up. You got to pick some people up for me in Vegas. Is that okay? Yeah, of course, champ. Yeah, we're ready to go. Okay. So let me know. Head over to head over to Clay Lacy 
then go over to Vegas. So let me know what time you're going to land so I can send them over there, and then Dan can get on a plane also, okay? Okay, so it'll be, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're sitting here uh, wrapping up dinner now. It's going to be about an hour, you know, about an hour to get to play. I'd say have him at the airport about 1045 or so, 1030, right. 1045. All right. It'll take me an hour to All get right, tell, tell Dan he can get, tell Dan to get on there also, please. I got you. All, All right. right, All right, thank you. Hey, yeah, I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and leave. Then. It's cool. Don't even worry about that's it. How, hey, that, that's how that happened? This is a whole different conversation. That's how that happened. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's how, how you said <laughs> You tell Dan to go to the airport, it's going to be about one hour. And then the whole time, though, don't nobody call him Floyd, Mr. Mayweather, nothing. Okay, champ, I'm going to be there. Yeah, it, that that's... got to be the best thing about being rich, man. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really that. I say rich is something that's short term. Uh, when it's long term, it, it's wealth. Mm. But that, it's that, established. Is, is that the best thing, though? Like, if you had a sex, I remember you brought Warren Buffett earlier, and it popped in my head. He still lives in a house that he grew up in. But he said, the only thing I have to have as a billionaire, I got to have a private jet. He was like, that's the best. He said, that's the best main thing. That's not, what, that's, that's not what Warren Buffett got, a private jet. So me and Warren Buffett is sitting down like this in a dressing room one time, right before one of my fights, and I'm talking to him. You know, I'm talking to him about, we talking about jets. I'm talking about my jet. At that particular time, I think I had two jets at that time. The next thing you know, this man tell me he got, I think, 540 jets. You got to think he owned net jets, if I'm not mistaken. So he had like 500 and some jets. So he really showing out. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, it's just that when, you live, when you've been living this life for so long, I think it's normal, you know, but, but you know, when people go on social media, they post. When they, then when I post, they get mad. They're like, oh, you just, you you cocky, you arrogant. I'm just telling the truth. Do guys like um, Warren Buffett, do they root for you? Considering knowing the background you come from, they know that, you know, in, in athletics, a lot of times we don't come from those financial demographics, yes. right? Do they root for you to not fail? Like, we're giving you investment advice or ideas. I'm not big headed to the point to where I don't ask for help. Right. I don't mind a asking for help. Have you? Well, Warren Buffett. Yeah. Well, I got guys that just like, I got other guys just like, that's just like Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. I don't mind, I sit down with them. And remember, I talked about this before in some of my interviews. I said, you know what? When I get with my guys, when I get with my Jewish buddies and my white buddies, you know, you gotta realize they hundreds of years in front of us. Mm -hmm. So, when I sit down with them, I'm going to say, yo, listen, I need to eat too. Right. You know? Because, you know, the, the, I, I know how, how to play the game with them. It's not really play the game with them. I know what they invest in. I know the moves that they make. But the only way you can learn it is being a student. And I'm a student. I don't mind learning. I don't mind asking for help. See, I, can, I ask for help. And then, because um, everything that I do, it's not reported to Forbes. Because remember, I told you I'm worldwide with this. Banks in Hong Kong, banks in Japan. I'm over in the UAE, banks over there. So I'm cutting major deals. So I could tell you guys over here that, you know, that I made one, over 1 1.2 billion, but you don't even know. I may have a billion dollars over there stashed away. So these are the, just the power moves that I'm, I'm making with, with guys over in Dubai. I got guys over in Dubai that no matter what I want, I built relationships years ago. That's the key word, relationship. Yeah. You know, people, um, I'm sure, when they look at you and see a guy as big as you, they don't think, they probably think that your pride will get in the way. No. And that you're too prideful to ask no. for help. So I think that was a big, that's a big lesson for me. Because yeah. we, can, we, can, we can have those moments, yeah. especially with the machismo athletes thinking, shit, I done made it, I done this myself. And you tend to forget about the support system or, or the, 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 the mentors yes. that's out there. Yes. So... Um, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that, because for me, this is about giving back. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I want it, it's easier to see, I think it's more transparent when people can see a figure as big as yourself showing that side and, and, and having those vulnerabilities in your life. So I respect that I have shit, to get, bro. I have to get the knowledge so I can be able to share the knowledge with my children. So my children and their children can sit at a round table together and do business once we're old. Yeah. But a person that I have to talk about on this show. I have to. And I had to take my hat off to Al Heyman. Mm -hmm. I mean, we was able to come together. I like to say I got two fathers. You know, a dad that taught me the fight game and then another one that taught me about business. 
He's such a shrewd businessman, a great guy, um, a father, great person, so smart. And uh, we worked together hand in hand. And we had a game plan. And our game plan was to take over the sport of boxing. And that's what we were, we were able to do together. And it's not just that. And, you know, and when he was like Floyd, when you told me you wanted to be, when you wanted uh, this mansion and, and this mansion and this jet and this house, we worked together. Did we get it done? I say, yes, we got it done. And he say, it's still more to come. So, you know, I'm still putting, putting power plays together. Like I sit at home, I'm, you know, I'm still collecting pay-per-view checks. So I put myself in a position to collect pay-per-view for the next probably uh, 30 years. So you took over, you revolutionized the boxing game, the marketing of the I am city. boxing. You're boxing. Okay. You took that over. Business-wise, man, just listen to you talk and listen to different things, but I'm, I'm eating this up right well, now. Well, you learning. know, because everybody, like I said before, you believe what you hear. They only want to show the bad. Yeah. Like I told you, they only want to talk about the bad things. Because even, I, I told you I get the hate on both on both sides, mm -hmm. from the blacks and the whites. So I get hate on, I get hate on both sides. So just think about this. Um, you look, I'm gonna always stand firm on what I believe in. Everybody can believe in what they wanna believe in, but I'm gonna stand firm on what I believe in. And since I stand firm on what I believe, cause I, I'm, I'm not like everybody else. Everybody else is, oh, all of them is doing this, all of them is wearing this, so you wear this. All of them is doing this, so you do this. I'm like, shit, I got to the top doing what Floyd wanted to do, so I'm not doing that. Because you took over, bo you, you are boxing. Like you said, making power moves in business. It can't last forever, Floyd. When, when, when does Floyd settle down? When does Floyd, when, when, when you- When do Warren Buffett settle down? He, uh, he, so, but he, he, he's married, he's chilling, he sits so, back, so, correct? So, so let me get this right. Yeah. <laughs> so let me get this right. Hy just hypothetically say I was. Mm -hmm. Just hypothetically say I was. Does that stop my hunger and my drive for building generational wealth, for wanting to help NBA young boy, wanting to help my children be a better me? No. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I am retired, but I'm not retired from helping those around me. Uh, I want them to surpass me. I want my kids to take what I've already generated and triple it and, and double it, if it's possible. But there's no end, there's no end number? End number? Is you, that, one you, billion, you, you, two billion, three billion, eight billion, it's not about, billion. It's, it's not about the money. I got, I can buy anything. Like when I look out there and I see a hotel, and I know I can buy it, so I don't triple that. I can buy anything. Like I said, Forbes don't know how much money I really make. Yeah. We talked Jeez. about we talked about cars earlier and your ventures. You got a new venture. You you've gotten into into NASCAR. Yes. And when you look at doing that, what was the thought in your head of okay, I'm gonna get involved in NASCAR, being a guy from boxing, but more importantly, being a businessman? Well, my thing is this: I'm not the only smart person in the room. And on my team, you have to be an asset. You can't be a liability. If you're a liability, then you don't need to be on my team. That's no different from a female that's in my life. If she's a liability, then she'll need to be with me. If she don't want to listen and learn, or she don't bring something to the table, then she'll need to be around me. As far as the NASCAR, James McNair, AKA the Harlem Hot Boy, AKA P. Rilla, he brought them to me. So even like, um, and I want all the ladies, that's, if you're listening, the Ricky Brazil clothing line, the female clothing line, Ricky Brazil, I mean, I'm involved with I'm involved with that company also. You know what I'm saying? So it's so many things, so many different things I'm involved with. Even like um uh so many different concert tours. I'm involved with concert tours. I'd have done everybody tour. Some of the biggest artists, and you wouldn't even know. Cause my name, my name don't have to be on everything. I have to be the marquee. Yeah, because sometimes if you put your name on certain things, you got people that's gonna be jealous. So sometimes I was like, I don't gotta have my name on it to collect the check. So when, and I think Channing was trying to get at this, but everybody that come on here be checking Channing, so he'd be scared. No, no, Channing, the thing is this, okay? We talked about Bill Gates. We talked about Warren Buffett. We talked about the Walton. Why they can still make money and do things, but us as, 
us, we and we continue to make money, then it's a problem. Or we broke. No, still Why? Make, investments make money and kickback. I'm talking about when you can sit, personally can settle down. I can do that now. He's but trying I, to say, stop being scared. He's trying to say, when you gonna get a woman, shut it down, just and just be do with her. Do some old man stuff. Go, what when you gonna go fishing? I feel like I feel like everything ain't for everybody. What's for you may not be for me. I have a woman in my corner. And even like my daughter mother, she's gonna always be in my corner. She don't judge me. She loves, she loves me for me, who I am. And if any woman's gonna be in my life, they gotta love me for who I am. Cause we gotta bond, we gotta be friends first. And me and her, we're friends first before we're anything. And a lot of people that's in relationships, that's settled down on social media, they're like, oh, couple of goals. Everybody be like, couple of goals. Oh, that's a, in the real life, they're, they're miserable. It's so great that she's able to have her, her own mansion, and I got my own mansion. We got a beautiful grandson because our situation may not work for nobody else, but as long as we're happy, you know? You in a relationship, you, everybody got their own woman, and everybody conduct their, their household like they want to conduct their household. You just said, don't you want some alone time? So it, it's so great for me to go to one of my, my many houses, whether, whether it's in Miami, New York, Las Vegas, LA, not LA, Beverly Hills, I should say. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's a different tax bracket. We, we did uh, Marshawn a couple weeks ago out in Vegas, Marshawn Beast Mode. And he always told the young boys, you got to protect your chickens, protect your mental. How do you find that peace? Like, what do you do to make sure you're mentally sharp? Do you meditate, yoga, anything? Like, are you just... You know what? Only you would ask the yeah, question. Yeah, I want to know. If he meditate, do well, you? Well, yeah, know? I, 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 bro, I, 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 what? The shit he do is stressful. He, you say you retire. It's a career change. He ain't retired. Right. He still got to get to it. Ain't no such he thing as right. retire. He right. So that shit's stressful. We got a lot of business to handle. So I, I, I want to know how do you relax? Because you got to you keep going. I, time to chill. You say a long time, but I just want to know what he do to make sure he's still sharp up here. Because that shit supposed to deteriorate. They tell you that when you come from these type of brutal sports. They do. You and, feel I, and, I, and I think and so. That's scary. So it was so crazy one day. I want to touch on something, Fred. So one day, um, they was, they was, I guess they had an interview with me and a little fighter. A little fighter was like, yeah, I sparred you X, Y, Z. I, I boxed you, Mayweather. And I was like, damn. And I was like, damn, I don't really remember. So then they was like, Floyd could be losing his memory. So then I said to myself, I could be slipping a little bit. I'm human, that's right, possible. Right. But the crazy part about it is I'm like, yo, if you really was putting in some real work, or really pushing me to the limit, then I would have knew who you was. I'm proud of you for becoming champion and how far you have gotten in the sport of boxing, but I don't remember you because you obvious you didn't leave a mark. And far as and far as memory loss, do I be sometimes do I think I'll be slipping a little bit? Yeah, I do. I do. Honestly, I do. And because and my uncle Roger, he he died from memory. You know, he died from that. And my grandmother did did also. And my dad actually is going through a lot mm -hmm. with memory loss. And I don't think it has nothing to do with boxing. So do I think I'm slipping a little bit as far as a little bit of memory loss? Absolutely, I do. We all go through that. But and that, you know what I say to myself? That's why. I'm, I'm pushing hard right now. I'm, I'm aggressively pushing for my kids to take over my businesses because I don't, I don't want to be like my Uncle Roger and I don't want to be like my grandmother. So I want to make sure that I eat the right foods because I, I take care of my body. You know, even since I've been out here, um, I make sure, you know, I'm, I, I, I go for a jog, probably not like I did when I was competing, I do like a little four, four miles. Try to do 450 push-ups. Now? 450 sit-ups, yeah. Well, you keep funny hours. Like even watching the all access stuff with you, you keep real funny hours. Like why why, why you want to sleep at 9 a.m. to 3 and then be up all night running around the streets? Like, have you always kept funny hours? You keep funny hours. Remember, we work hard to become our own boss so we can do what we want to do. The ultimate goal is to go to sleep when you want to and wake up when you want to. See, when you don't wake up when you want to, then guess what? Somebody's controlling you. Mm. And I don't want to be controlled because I want to be my own boss. That's why I paid 750000 to get out my contract. And in three fights, I made $750 million. Dang. 
Fred, yeah. And them numbers adding. Freddie T can't add them numbers, but we can't. <laughs> you know, Freddie T can't figure out them numbers is really crucial to Freddie T. Sometimes later. that shit cut off. You don't have to count no more. Oh, shit. Yeah, right you know, there. ain't no counting. Flo, you seem like you was, I'm, I'm the nasty one on the show. <laughs> I'm I'm now, I come off the nightstand. My wife in here too, and she just shake her head because we got babies. I mean, three of them. Okay. How? Yeah. Ten, nine, and one. Okay. What with that one? One years old. We was together during COVID, and I was a COVID baby, huh? Yep. I locked that door. Them kids watch TV, and we get after it. Okay. All right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we were talking. We talked about something another show when you were talking about just relationships and doing, like, kind of finding where where y'all stuff, how you work together, and we started talking about open relationships. Where, like, y'all, 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 y'all think about it. You know what I'm saying? We can start talking about that. Like, <laughs> it really was. Y'all want to know? Because, 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 my, because my daughter and mother right there, y'all want to ask about the girls. <laughs> you can ask, just say, point talk about the girls. They're like, we don't care. I, I just, we, you know, because I, yeah. I, I was, I was saying everything, everything worked for them people. You, well, you, you said it. This is what so, so what, the girls. so, so what, what do you really want to know? What, what's up with the girls, man? <laughs> <laughs> it, it just, um, I feel like I live my life the way I want to live my life. Um, um, it's, it's girls in my life. They're cool. They're all right. They're all right. Yeah, I treat everybody nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what you, but, but what do you want to know? Like, what do we travel? We travel. Mm-hmm. What? I treat, like, if, like you if, know. I, if I had a pilot I could call, like you just did, and yeah. says, hey, champ, where you need to be? Be in Vegas, pick up Dan, and fly down here. Wait, but I would but, have but, a crazy but it's, but it's energy not, on one of those planes. But no, but it's not like, it's not like, but you got to realize, if my daughter, mother, like, she going to show them, Melissa, come show them what you got on your hands. She got she got work, come show them. Show them the barking, show them your shit. She got stuff. She got million dollar rings on her hands. Two and three million dollar rings on her hands. <laughs> Floyd told you come over here. I ain't said that. She got stuff. <laughs> Where is your other ring at? Who knows? She got stuff. Where's your other ring? That's that's, that's, a, that's a single. That's a single. I got, a, I got a couple little journeys up in here. That's a single diamond. That's I one. I got a little work in here. Oh, I don't know why. Oh, yes. Where's your other rock? She got rocks. She got. Who, I don't. Who you rob? But Lord. you gotta realize she all that stuff. <laughs> all them bur- all them crocodile burger bags that cost eighty thousand. The, the bag cost eighty thousand, but we got that stuff back in the day. We got that like sixteen years ago. She got she got a whole bunch of big rocks. I got to treat her right. Yeah, yeah. And it's not that I mean she's a reflection of me. So I'm gonna make sure she's okay. I'm make sure I'm all take care of my family. Yeah. But I'm gonna live my life the way I want to live my life. I mean you gotta realize, I had um my oldest son, I had my oldest son, and then six months later I had uh you know she had my daughter six months later. So that is how life that's how life falls. But I love my family. I'm always gonna take care of my family. Make sure. My family got what they got what they got what they need. When but listening he, to you, he he keep on talking about. He <laughs> yeah, wanna, no, I just uh, like you know. Just, man, listen, if I I'm box like that. you box and did what you did, well, I'm past that. You passed that. Nuts. You, <laughs> we passed that. I'm married now. I I I, I might. We, I'm we passed that. We passed the or- <laughs> <laughs> Man, when you know you, you know, I did all that. I did all that. All that. Oh, okay, okay. The three isms in the four. So I did man. all that. Man. It was fun. It was fun. Man, lights can be yeah. tripping. Man. You just don't know what to do. Everybody's around. You don't know. So hands. Did you, did you ever say is is a favorite uh, a famous Floyd Mayweather saying having one is closer than none. Having one is too close to having none. Mm-hmm. What that I, mean? I mean, I, I mean, you gotta realize this. I mean, like I said, more trust. I mean, like I said, everybody, everybody put trust in everybody. I keep trying to tell you, I put trust in yourself. I don't trust nobody. I trust. The people I do trust. Al Hammond is one of the people that I that I that I do trust. A couple of my guys, Rick and Miller. But like I said before, I don't, I don't put too, too much trust in people. The reason we you know got in contact with you is Alicia Zubakowski. Yes. I know that's your family. That's our family. She yes. hold it down for us all the time. That's why we were able to, able to pivot and come on over here, and she does it all. But. She gives me hell every day she talks to me. She says, Channing, we're not gonna fight now today. <laughs> Think about the big picture. She has that little thing, you know yes. what I'm saying? Did she, did, did, she, did she give you hell too? Well, I wanna just say thank you to Alicia Zubakowski and her family. 
Um, I had a chance to meet her a long time ago when I first met her. I don't like to let anybody just come in and invade on, on, on us and our team, but warm-hearted person. She's been through a lot. She was able to, able to beat cancer and, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm behind that 100% cancer. Um, Alicia, great person. We look at her as one of our family members. She will always have my support. And when she asked me to do you do this show, I said I'd do it in a heartbeat. Anything for Alicia. That's my family. Listening to you throughout the night, and you know, you mentioned some things uh, with uh, the other mother of your child, and yes. what people say, like if Floyd Mayweather's around and something happens, and you have all of this hate, like you said, white hate, black hate, from all of these different sides, at your core, what is it that you want people to know and believe Floyd Mayweather is? I don't really have to, I don't really have to, I don't care what they really believe. I don't really, really care. Because no matter what you do, it's never good enough for anyone. If I, when I was a knockout artist, then I wasn't, then it was like, uh, he's not fighting no more. Then my body broke down. I still found, found a way to beat fighters. Then he's not a knockout artist, no matter what. They always want, you know, he didn't really break Mark, Rocky Marcy on the record. Say whatever you want to say. The history of books gonna say something totally different. My name will live forever. I don't care what they say. Have you decided what you want your tombstone to read? Like, what's your legacy? I ain't gonna say no tombstone because I'm going to the mausoleum. Mm. So yeah, I feel like I'm better than somebody throwing dirt on me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But to each his own. Correct. You know what I'm saying? I don't never knock nobody. So I want to make sure that's clear to each his own. Because if I say something like that, oh, he doing like this. I buried my cousin. No, nah, man, I'm talking about for me. You know, right. it's okay. Like I always say, it's okay for people to do things the way they want to do it. But when I do it, I'm showing out. He bragging, he boasting. Oh, I bust my ass to get what I got. Right. I just, I, I wasn't, Fred, I wasn't slacking. Right, right. I just met Rick, so I'm gonna snitch on him real quick, wherever he at. <laughs> I seen him walking with the Domino's app. He tell me you play that all the time. I need your username so I can beat your ass, man. I'm gonna make sure you get that. That's, a, that's, a <laughs> that's all I want, champ. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure you get that. I, I, I love that. I love that Domino's. Yeah, he said, I can't hey, tell champ, champ man, I got that. This app. is uh mean wanna play all day. I do, I play all day. Yeah. This has been an honor for us, man, to to go from being younger and watching you as Money May and seeing you have wars with people like Diego Corrales to seeing you turn yourself into a mogul by building fights, but then respecting your opponent after? Well, I can't talk about an opponent like shit. If every, if every guy I beat wasn't shit, then I'm not shit. <laughs> <laughs> who, you, who you beat? You got any real beef? Nobody ain't got no beef with me. I'm hey. not, you know I'm not hard to find. You always see me everywhere. Yeah, but no, like you build a fight up and I know and you, Oh, you said do I got do beat? That, like, is there? Because I know you're a builder, fight up, talking trade. Is there anybody really like? I got an on site list. Three no, 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 not on site. But is, do, is is it people that I don't like? Yeah. Like, 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 what you mean? Like, in the ring or out the ring that I don't really give a about? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. like, like that. Yeah. Like yeah. in the ring or out the ring? Both. Oh yeah, I mean they, are, they already know who they is. I ain't, you know I ain't really got to call names out, but I'm not hard to find. See, the thing about me, people people can say whatever they want to say about me. And, and I am a businessman. But sometimes people get it mixed up. Like shit can get ugly. And if you, if you violate, I will demonstrate. And a lot of times it don't got nothing to do with size, how big a person is, how small a person is. Anything can happen. Anybody can be, anybody can be knocked out. Because remember, the chin don't lift weights. That's what I always say. That don't, anybody can be knocked out. So I don't put nothing past nobody. I can be knocked out. Hit me from the blind side. It, I mean, that's most of how, how fighters get knocked out with the hook. You can't see a hook coming because it comes from the flying side. But as far as with boxing, um, I don't really need to beef with. I, I really don't need to beef with nobody in a sport of boxing, even though it could be some people I really don't like. I don't need to beef with nobody. They ain't got what I got. They boxers. I'm a businessman. And then on the outside, most times my motherfucker got beef with me because they ain't got what I got. You know what I'm saying? They, they probably they, they tripping over probably tripping over some bitches. Tripping up some bitches, know that I really got what I say I got. Cause, they, Cause I'm 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 not I'm not no fraud. So if I say right now, if I tell y'all 
I'll take y'all to my house. It costs 52 million. We can go right over there. If I tell you uh, the private jet going to be at the airport waiting, it's going to be there. So if I, anytime you see me with, you know, you will see me with four or five million cash. I can have, I got four or five million cash. I can show. I got a hundred million cash. I can show. But like, well, but once again, everything ain't for everybody. I may go in there and show every once in a while, show a million, show two million, but I stopped doing that. So my so jealous. The you know you talk about people being jealous. Who who was one of the guys though that you felt was the toughest you faced in the ring? That 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 really stepped in there and that you respect the way they approach you, the way they fought on the, on the night, the lights were the brightest. I'm a, you know, I'm gonna really say, um, even though I beat, I, I beat Pacquiao at 10 rounds to two, I, I can see why he fight, he, he fight reckless. It's, it's either kill to be killed. But with me, I'm just so savvy, I'm, I'm 10 steps ahead of him. I watch it, you know, your movement, you can't, so when we first came out in the first round, I said, we're gonna stab, we're gonna get this shit established right now. So I hit him, boom, hard. So I buzzed him in the first round, let him know. I don't know what they told you, but it's some hot shit in here. That's why if I, if I ain't throwing no hot shit, then all these boys would be walking me down. Right. That's real. I mean, I think that's the, that's, that's the thing you had that, that misconception that, that you couldn't punch, right? And it was- after, and, You know, at this say after, basically, Damn near after, after 12 years of my career, right. something like that. After I didn't, I didn't beat everybody, and then a whole new roster came up, and, and, I, and, I could, and I smoked them too. So it's just like, you know, somebody in a, uh, like, like, kind of like Brady. Brady was smoking the motherfuckers early on, then he came back a little bit later on. That's your guy though, right? Oh, Brady? Yeah. He's my guy. What is it gonna be like watching ball without Tom Brady now, uh, man? My, well, the, well, Brady is a hell of a player, but to me, the best football player, Jerry Rice, that's just me. Cause I don't get who who throw the ball, he gonna catch it. Yeah, that shit is like it's yeah, like him. No matter who in the ring, they gonna catch smoke. They, they gonna get champ, that, man, they we get appreciate you, bro. No. Be good, champ. Yeah. Number one. You kill that, right? dog. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, sure, bro, appreciate, appreciate you. you. He, oh, he, he checked you like six to times too. I like it. You know, he checked you like six times. I like. It. I was just making sure he ain't put his right foot hey, back. Hey, you ain't tell him nothing about being small though. You tell me something all the time. Man, you tell me. And then one more. Three, two, one. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission.